you know, sometimes it's like the medicine for whatever you're feeling. And I feel, I feel lucky to like have something like that. And obviously there are other things that can like provide a similar sort of comfort and relief, but like, this is something that's just like so simple. This is Champagne is also a band podcast. One songwriter, one song. I'm Sven, your host for a journey into the music of Champagne Urbana. Recorded in the Blue Box studio with a songwriter from the Champagne Urbana music scene, past or present. Champagne is also a band podcast is proud to be a part of the Champagne Showers podcast network. Welcome to Champagne is also a band podcast. Today, I have Karina Say. Karina, welcome to the show. Thank you. Today, we're going to be listening to her song, New Blue Rollerblades. And at this point, it's unreleased, right? Yes, very unreleased. Correct. Without further ado, as I like to say, let's listen to the song. I be in my new blue roller blades rolling around the city. I ain't going nowhere. I don't got nobody with me. Got my fanny pack and my sweatpants on. Place is tied up when my phone turn up. Hey, no blue roller blades feeling kind of pretty. I ain't going nowhere. Don't got nobody with me. Got my fanny pack and my sweatpants on. Place is tied up when my phone turn off. I didn't finish my homework last night. I was busy watching music videos Writing about my feelings Might have made a call to somebody I should be trying harder to let go And nothing feels right Let my head hit the window on the bus ride I let the boys talk to me I don't say nothing Can't they tell that I'm empty on the inside I used to drunk call exes Now I call my mom I don't lie to the dentist, all I do is floss mm-hmm. I let them boys talk to me, I don't say nothing And when it gets lonely, baby, I be in my new Look at all the plays rolling around the city I ain't going nowhere, I don't got nobody with me Got my fanny pack and my sweatpants on Place is tied up when my phone turn up Feeling kind of pretty, I ain't going nowhere Don't got nobody with me Got my fanny pack and my sweatpants on Lace is tied up when my phone turn off I finally took the trash out It's been about a week Missing mom's cooking, asked her for her recipes But I fucked it up I'll call Uber Eats Make chicken, that's a dollar sixty-three Man, I forgot to do my groceries Trying to tell me he's in love with me Cause he don't know when he got a baby boy Just a little lonely mm. And nothing feels right Let my head hit the window on the bus ride I let the boys talk to me I don't say nothing Can't they see I'm just trying to get my soul right mm. I used to drunk call exes Now I go to sleep Cause I got class in the morning Chapters to read. I let them boys talk to me, I don't say nothing. And when it gets lonely, baby, I'll be in my new look with all the plays rolling around the city. I ain't going nowhere, I don't got nobody with me. Got my fanny pack and my sweatpants on. Place is tied up when my phone turn off. Hey, no look with all the plays feeling kind of pretty. I ain't going nowhere. Got nobody with me, got my fanny pack and my sweatpants on. Place is tied up when my phone turn off. I, yeah, I have fun being alone, never getting married. Only wear blue, red, and yellow. 
never secondary. I let them boys talk, tell me I don't say nothing. Cause I got my new blue collar blaze and I'm on to something. Yeah, I be in my new blue collar blaze, they won't see me coming. Yeah, I be in my new blue, hey, I be in my. My first and favorite question is always, so what came first? Was it, was it the lyrics or was it the music? For this song, I believe it was the lyrics. I wasn't, you know, like, I'm going to sit down and write a song about my rollerblades. It was like, I remember walking around campus and I just like, in my head, it was like, new blue rollerblades, like that, that hook, like that lead into the hook. That was just stuck in my head for a while. And then I sat down with it and I started fleshing it out a little bit. The music was just kind of a, maybe a placeholder. It was like two chords, right? And so I was, I was playing it on my guitar just so I would have something to sing to. You know, once, once I had the two chords, that was pretty much it for, for the instrumental. So the lyrics was like the focus there like the instrumental itself definitely came later because i wrote the song and i was like i think i can hear this on a beat right so i sent it off to this guy that i knew at the time not very well but i had met him around at a few music events and i sent it to him and i was like hey let me know if any part of this like speaks to you in any way like i'm trying to get a beat made to this like let me know if you think you could do something with it if not it's totally okay and i sent that off to him probably at like 10 p.m that night and when i woke up he had sent me a beat at like four in the morning like he, he finished the whole thing and he sent it back to me and it was crazy to me because I'd never heard any of my music like translated like that before and singing along to it it just felt perfect like he totally nailed it so you received this new beat arranged for you finished at four o'clock in the morning and then did did you just immediately jump right into it or did you like want to simmer on it a little bit for me it was perfect like as soon as I heard it I was like he knew exactly kind of what we're going for here. Um, I'm talking about Jay Kim, by the way, is the guy who made the beat. For a few weeks, I was just kind of like singing on it here and there. I was just getting used to it. And then eventually, you know, we started recording it. We, we got a rough mix done and then we got like what was supposed to be our final mix. You know, I've, I've now gone back and made like another final mix because, you know, I had the words, he had the beat and we had you know, the means to record, and I was really excited about it. There wasn't a lot of delay or anything like that. It was pretty much just, just going for it. I guess the thing is that for me, I think about my first inclination when I heard this song, I'm like, well, what what do the rollerblades mean to you, right? Like, mm-hmm. is I get this sense of, it's like the simple pleasure in a way, right? Like, it's this one thing, like for me, it, it's like, I don't know, I can't think of something. It's like when you get, for me, it would be like, I get this new vinyl record that I really want to just sit down and like listen mm-hmm. to and enjoy and like it's my thing, right? It's like the thing yeah. that's my personal moment. It feels like this story kind of unfolds about the, it's more about finding you and yourself in these moments where it's just you and not necessarily a reflection of like the other people that are around you. What do the rollerblades mean to you? Yeah, no, I'm so glad it came across that way to you because that's that is really how I how I see it. It's something that kind of speaks to your inner child, something that just like really truly belongs to you and something that you can seek comfort in, um, something that's like invigorating for you to do and something that just like makes you feel more like yourself. Um, and that can be anything. So for me at the time, I had just gotten those rollerblades. It was kind of on a whim. I don't even remember why it hit me, but I used to rollerblade all the time when I was younger. And I remembered I was like, in in my head, you know, I was probably like eight years old at the time, but my memory of it now, I was like, wow, I was really good at rollerblading. So I was like, I should get back into it. And I got my rollerblades and I got on them and I was so unsteady. Like, I just, I haven't had this physical experience in for as long as I can remember of just being like totally not in control of like what my body was doing or how fast I was going. The first time, the first time I was on them, I was going to the open mic at Espresso Royale. Annika was hosting it. Uh And I was like, I was like, it's a short way. Like I'll just rollerblade over there. Like I don't need to practice. And it was like, um, (laughs) 
I almost knocked out so many times. I I didn't even think about the fact that I don't know how to break completely. Like every intersection, I risked my life because I just I simply could not slow down. But I got there. I made it. And I remember just like laughing at myself and feeling like so silly, you know, uh-huh. and so you know, so like a kid again. And I hadn't like been in touch with that in a really long time. And so, you know, even though in some ways I was, like, terrified for myself, it was also, like, I was, like, I have to keep doing this. Like, this is, like, one of the best things i felt in a long time. So, yeah, that's kind of what the rollerblades mean to me. It's a way for you to not take yourself so seriously. It's something you can do. You know, your walls have to come down. And, and at the end of it, you feel, you know, you found comfort. You found everything else just kind of goes away. So that's what it is to me. I wanted to kind of dive into uh, a couple of the lyrics like things that that kind of jumped out to me it's like i could totally picture it and it didn't necessarily have to be you that i pictured on this but it was just like i could totally see somebody doing that you know like got my fanny pack and my sweatpants on uh laces tied up and my phone turned off and like i guess i guess that like cinched to me that idea of that it's a just about you having that moment or or the the singer having the moment of just themselves. Yeah. One thing I, I that you return back to over and over, which I think is interesting, like these back and forth things because of like these two forms of transportation, rollerblades and also riding the bus, that they, there's kind of the yin and yang there a little bit. Whoa, okay. I think, I think you could almost make the argument that you could get anywhere at least in champagne kind of about the same quickness maybe maybe i'm wrong but about the same quickness on rollerblades as you can with like in a in like a bus right so but what what's the difference there is like is it a, an individual thing where you you are completely in control and it's just you or is it like this mass of people you know like getting going together and so that's why I feel like there are these two opposite things. But I was just curious, like, please tell me a little bit about, like, the bus. What, where did that metaphor yeah. kind of come in? <laughs> no, so, so the thing about this song just across the board is it's not very abstract, just, like, these little snippets and, like, literal concrete objects from my life that I was just kind of logging like I wasn't trying to dig deeper into anything so when you hear like I let my head hit the window on the bus ride that was really me just like thinking about how sometimes I'm on the bus and I'm so tired and I'm so you know sometimes it's kind of like a hopeless feeling you know it doesn't feel good to have your head on the window on the bus ride like the bus is moving your head is just kind of you're just like gently like concussing yourself like it's not it's not comfortable but sometimes you're just like you're so oh exhausted and you're so empty of like comfort that like you you don't have it in you you know to to keep your head up I guess and it's also kind of like a a little bit of a music video kind of moment I think like you know I think we have those moments where like you have your headphones in you're on the bus or whatever you're like looking out the window and you and you like detach for a moment you're like wow look at me like in this tragic little like vignette you know, because you're on the bus ride, you're very anonymous. You know, you're around all these people, but we're uh-huh. all there. You know, we're not really there together. And so that, that was part of it for me, just like sometimes, mm. you know, being in a situation like that where you're surrounded by people, but you're not, and you're just kind of like stuck in your head. That's really what I was writing about there. It was just something I was feeling like every day, you know, taking the bus to class, going home, stuff like that. W- were they new blue rollerblades? Yes. Yeah, they were blue. They're beautiful. They're not so new anymore. But yeah, that was definitely just like something straight out of <laughs> what was happening to me. So I don't feel like you want it to be heavy handed at all. But I'm going to make it I'm going to make it sound like it could be a heavy handed presentation. But like, there's kind of this sense of um, feel, feel free to roll your eyes on this too. <laughs> so um, like, there's this sense of like, a little sense of redemption, right? Like you kind of have in the beginning, like I didn't finish my homework last night and kind of you're distracted. But then like you could say towards the end, it's, it's like, instead of now drunk dialing, um, exes, you're, you're saying, you know, like 
you're not distracted by that anymore because you're you've got classes in the morning and you got chapters to read and like you're you've got this like somehow the the rollerblades have like kind of brought you back into what you feel is more important like do you have like a favorite line in here that makes you happy every time you sing it or yes um well the whole song for me this is like my favorite song to sing like uh, like by the end of it i'm like oh yeah this is who i am you know but my favorite line is definitely the bridge oh and i have fun being alone never getting married only wear blue red and yellow never secondary yeah i was wondering (laughs) that was one of the first lines that i wrote from that whole song actually i just didn't know where to put it was there a bad breakup or something that also kind of spurned this or like (laughs) that's a good question you can you could say that for the past few years really my life and romance hasn't really happened in like oh starts and stops or like escalation and de-escalation or like oh we got together and then we broke up for me Mm. it was just kind of like a constant tension and like constant confusion Mm. (laughs) so it's not like there was something good and then it ended so it's like when i refer to like if there's any references to romance or love or like men in the song it's not necessarily breakup it's just like something that's been weighing on me you know like i think at the time i was still like involved with someone and it still was kind of like that heavy thing nothing really changed you know that like spurred me to write about like oh this was a breakup it was just kind of like like i feel like i've been stuck in that fog for a really long time that's more what i was getting at but i guess there is the literal mention of like like i do say exes so that's pretty definitive i also like that you used to go and call exes but now you call your mom and you also mentioned about missing your mom's cooking. Mm-hmm. I'm assuming you have a good relationship with your mom. Is that like a pretty important relationship to you? Yeah, definitely. I actually just recently, I've gone back to email as a form of like, outside of work and school, I started trying to start up email correspondences with my friends just as a way to keep in touch. And my mom is like the only person who writes back to me on a regular basis. And yeah, I was just reading one of her emails earlier today. And it just like... It hits me all the time, you know, like how much, you know, obviously she's my mom, but sometimes I'm still surprised by like how much she understands me and how much I don't have to explain to her, you know, when I wrote New Blue Rollerblades, so this was like last fall, like we've touched on earlier, you know, I'm kind of getting at this just like, oh, I just need comfort, I need relief, and I need like warmth and someone just to like understand me and that that's kind of what I was feeling at that time and and someone who I always go back to and someone who can like see into me so effortlessly that's my mom basically so when I was feeling low a lot of those times I was like you know a lot of times in my brain I would just be like I just need to go home Mm. you know I need to talk to my mom okay so I have to point out well not point out but at least ask uh what's your favorite recipe or what's the favorite thing that your mom makes I was actually thinking of a specific recipe when I wrote that line it was the soup that she would always make and it's like really really simple stuff it's like tomatoes potatoes chicken like corn all just kind of like boiling for a really long time it was something that when I was a kid I'd be like ew I don't want that you know she would like make it for dinner and like me and my brother would just like make a point out of not eating it you know last fall it was like my first experience living in an apartment I wasn't on a meal plan anymore and I just like was kind of at a loss for like how to sustain myself and and I realized like I would just like get these cravings and be like oh I just need some of you know, like that soup that I made fun of when I was younger or whatever, you know, and so I asked my mom, I was like, can you teach me how to make that soup that I used to make? And I tried it and it was just awful. It just tasted like water with like veggies in it. I almost got there. Like I tried it a few times and a few times it like did kind of give me that homey feeling. At the time, that's what that was about. What do you want to do with this song at some point? I mean, like, are are you planning on putting together an album or are you thinking of putting together an EP, something like that? I've had this, had this idea in my head for a while now. I'm putting together an EP. You know, I did my final version of New Blue Roller Blades and another song called In My Memory. I recorded with Larry Gates oh. over at the Little Red Recovery Room. I, I think this is true of, like, literally anyone who, na- who makes music. Like, everyone is sitting on so much music because it's it's hard to get stuff out and it's hard to feel good about stuff and push it out because, we you know, you get tired of it and you get tired of listening to your music and you're like, this isn't worth putting out anymore. But I've been sitting on a lot of music for the past, like, year and a half. And, and as I kind of build up, you know, this library, I'm starting to see 
themes and I'm starting to see threads and I'm like, oh, these definitely fit together. Like these should be together on a project. I'm looking at putting an EP together, hopefully for the fall, where that's what I'm thinking. I have high hopes for this song because it's my favorite song that I've ever written. My greatest dream would be for this song to go viral on TikTok. I got on TikTok about a week ago and it changed everything for me. Best case scenario for me is that people are able to, you know, rollerblade to it or skate yeah. to it or like, you know, enjoy themselves in like a dynamic way to it, whatever that is. It, it's funny because when I wrote it, you know, in many ways, I don't know if this came across at all, but in many ways it was like a sad song when I wrote it. But at this point, for me, performing it is kind of like a celebratory thing. So so that's how it feels for me. When I put it out, I would like it to to speak to people in that way. Some songs just get picked up and everybody does like something with it. And I, just, I don't know how that, mm-hmm. like, what's the magic sauce to that? Like, how does that happen? I but, don't know. Um, <laughs> uh, but yeah, I... I could totally, I'm just saying I could totally see that. I've seen some of the ones that have gone viral that people have done. And I, I think yours fits that. I don't know if you could say like the mold, but it fits, it fits that, that feeling at least, you know, so. I hope so. I don't know what the, what the formula is, but um, I'll keep working at it. I, I'm sure it's not widely distributed or else everybody would be doing it right. So, um <laughs> Yeah. Well, I I look forward to hearing like more songs and like everything else that's going to come out. And I'd like to see your body of work like put together in in one central location, like an EP or Mm. or an album or something like that. I'll just ask it. So, um, so did you get Uber Eats? Did you get some some (laughs) McChicken that's $1.63? I've actually, I've, I've wondered, I'm like, is anyone ever going to call me out? Because the McChicken is actually 129 but I do remember with tax, last time I got a McChicken, it was $1.63. So if anyone <laughs> wants to question me on that, I'm pretty certain that it's $1.63. No, I did not actually get Uber Eats. I don't think it'd be worth it to Uber Eats and McChicken. I definitely was eating McChickens. My sister at the time was working for Postmates, and she heard the song, and she was like, she was like, ouch, that kind of hurt. She was like, you couldn't have said Postmates. <laughs> but... Um, I don't know. That's that's what I was thinking at the time. I will say, ultimately, that line is more about the McChicken than the Uber Eats. That's where I stand on that. <laughs> COVID-19 got you down? You looking for some music? Some video games? Well, Exile Main Street still has all the things you need. New and used LPs, CDs, and video games. Exile on Main Street still has something for any music enthusiast and old school gaming devotee. Exile on Main Street is taking orders, making deliveries, and pickups by appointment. They can find just about any music or video game you need. Check out their website, exilemainstreet.com, for links to their Discogs page for new additions. You can also contact them via Facebook Messenger to see what they can find for you. They can also be reached on Instagram, Twitter, email, or phone at 217-398-MAIN. That's 217-398-6246. Karina, do you have a favorite venue that you like to play at or see a show? Or both? (laughs) Whenever I think of you know, champagne or bin venues. Like the first thing that comes to mind is always going to be the Canopy Club because that's the first one I ever went to. That's the first place where I was like taken seriously, you know, mm. as a as a singer before I even took myself seriously. Performing at Canopy, seeing shows at Canopy is always going to be something special for me. I will say I love singing at Sipyard. I did a show there last year with the guy who was touring from, I think, Seattle. You know, you never know what to expect sometimes when you do these local shows. You're like, I don't know what sort of turnout we're going to have. You can't really count on anything. But that was one of those things where people showed up for it and it ended up being really special. And, and it's always a nice surprise to, you know, sometimes you agree to do these shows, and you don't really know the headliner, you haven't gotten a chance to connect. But sometimes, you know, at the show itself, you hear them perform, and you're like, Oh, my God, that comes across like in real time, just like watching them perform and then watching you perform. So that was one of those times. So I love being at Sipyard. I, I would say Canopy or Sipyard, but Canopy is always going to be just have a, have to occupy a different 
space for me. So was the open mic at the Canopy Club the first place that you played in Champaign-Urbana? Yeah, yeah, it was the open mic. I had been going to the ones at the Union. Uh, Music for the Masses does an open mic there. But the first time I was like at a venue was, was the Canopy Club. Is there a favorite show that you've seen in Champaign-Urbana? Favorite show that I've seen? I love, I've loved every New Souls show I've been to. Mike Ingram, Brennan T. Washington, CC, or Lola Honey. This is one that I opened for, but it was, I had more fun watching them, I think, than I had singing. I opened for Smoke in Space and New Souls at Seven Saints, the beer garden. It was amazing because I had gone pretty close to like, to Marielle and Grant, but I had never seen them like in performance mode like that before. So I did my little set, whatever, I sat down, they went on and I was blown away. Mm. Um, I didn't know Grant could sing like that. I didn't know he had pipes like that. Mari, I knew she could sing, but like seeing them like all lit up like that, you know, outside and, and, you know, in that beautiful beer garden, I was like, you know, I was so captivated and the new souls came on and that was so much fun. I had seen them here and there. I opened for them a while back before that. They're so good at what they do. Like they're really so locked in with each other and so locked in with the crowd and to see them just like in their element like that, killing it, you know, having so much fun just amongst themselves. It was so much fun to watch like it it like flew by for me i swear like their set felt so quick but i know it was like an hour long but um yeah that that's a really special one for me you've mentioned smoke and space and you've mentioned new souls are those your favorite champagne urbana artists right now or is there one like that you you also dig a lot i mean there's a lot to choose from so much to choose from <laughs> This is hard because everybody that I talk to on a regular basis, like, are the local <laughs> Champagne Urbana artists. Right. For me, New Souls, like, I will go out of my way to see a New Soul show. I just feel like they're tapped into something and it's like, it's so electrifying and like, I love, I just love to see them sing. I love to see CC sing. Um, like, really, my experience with quote unquote live music lately has been on Zoom. So on Zoom, you know, there's always... Annika, you know, Annika Emily, there's the Dom Patrol Anka, there's Jake Fava, you know, all these people that I, I've been watching perform for a really long time now. And it's like, it's so much fun to see them like experiment and to just like hear how their sounds change. Jake Fava, especially, he sounds so different hmm. than when I heard him for the first time, like a year and a half ago. So yeah, it's more, more than just like, oh, who do I like to listen to? You know, it, it's kind of like, these people, like, I'm invested in them. I am at once, like, their fan who's been following them and then also, like, their friend, right? So they definitely, they have a special place in my heart and I'll always be interested in the sort of music they're making. Has there been any any inclination maybe forming a super group that was <laughs> Karina, Annika, Jake, the Dawn Patrol? I mean, I think that that could work, you know? <laughs> Where do you want to go with your talent? Is this something that you like want to pursue as, as a career? That's a good question. Music, for me, starting out, it always served like a more internal purpose. It was just like a way for me to kind of get in touch with what was happening up here. And then as I got, you know, more open with it, once I got used to sharing that, it became really like a way to make friends. You know, I transferred here as a sophomore and I was kind of at a loss. I was like, I don't know where to start with this place. It's huge. You know, I came from a school that was like 50 times smaller and I came here and I was like, the only thing I know, like the only place I know where I can go and I will pretty much be okay is like go to an open mic. So for me, music at this point, it's a way that I connect with people and it's a way that I express myself and a way that I receive the expression of others and in a way that I have fun pretty much as it's developed I'm like oh I guess I can put stuff out oh I guess like I can see if people will listen to it and people do a lot of the time I don't put much stake in that like it's for for me I'm like still pretty zoomed in and you know my scope really for for music for me is like still pretty it just in the moment it's a lifelong thing for me i know that i don't know what it'll look like all the time you know like it looks really different for me right now than it ever did before like this right now is already a much bigger scale than i ever imagined for myself so i'm definitely i'm just kind of following it and seeing like who it takes me to and and where i find it so fascinating that it's like 
of course, at this point when we're feeling so isolated, like this is when we need music. This is when we need entertainment. This is when we need that emotional connection to somebody because of something they've created or recorded. How have you found yourself creating during this time? It definitely has taken on a few different forms. When when quarantine first started, like that was very jarring for me. And I felt suddenly you know, like we all did, like really, like the rug was just pulled out from under you. I was like, I, I like have lost all footholds, all social footholds, like in this world. So like a few weeks into it, I remember like, like I'd been home for a while and something about being home and having everything put on hold started to like almost activate older memories for me, like things I hadn't thought about in a long time or things that I maybe hadn't fully processed, like started to be more vivid in my mind. And so I like ended up writing the first songs I wrote, you know, when after the coronavirus escalated were about like a two year old relationship that I was like, that I had thought I'd put away like forever. Right. So that was unexpected. I think that can happen. I think sometimes when like, when you just go to radio silence out of nowhere, like I think old things can kind of like reveal themselves to you. I think part of it, I've noticed this, I, I see people releasing like quarantine themed songs we were discovering like a new range of emotion in the quarantine and the lockdown and a lot of us like the only way we know how to process that is writing about it so i did i I wrote a couple of quarantine themed songs it felt like something i had to do at the time that was part of what has kept my writing going i was just working on a song the other day i feel like i'm back at a point where my songwriting is kind of like it always was which is just coming out of any sort of like intense feeling because i don't know if this is like things loosening up or we're just we've gotten used to where we are so like maybe our feelings have adjusted to it as well you know you still feel things like heartbreak heartache you miss people you love people that that's all still happening you get mad you know and so lately the stuff I've been writing lately has just been more along that vein it's just back to kind of just processing and you know just like journaling Even in the midst of the current shelter-in-place order, the Jubilee Cafe is continuing to serve packaged, home-cooked meals free to all every Monday evening, 5 to 6.30 p.m. Meals are available for pickup outside the 6th Street door to the Community United Church of Christ in Champaign, Illinois, 805 South 6th Street in Champaign. Jubilee Cafe's mission remains the same. Feed hungry people by cooking healthy and delicious meals. We are open to anyone who cares to receive a meal. For information on the meal or how to volunteer, go to the Jubilee Cafe CUCC Facebook page or email us at jubilee.cafe at community-ucc.org. Karina, what is your favorite non-musical thing? Okay, well, the, I mean, the first thing that comes to mind is rollerblading, which I hesitate with because I like, you know, obviously we went into it, you know, that was the song. But yeah, rollerblading, or just like even, I, I think I could extend it to like skating in general. It just like unlocked something <laughs> for me. You know, sometimes it's like the medicine for whatever you're feeling. And I feel I feel lucky to like have something like that. And obviously there are other things that can like provide a similar sort of comfort and relief, but like this is something that's just like so simple and so innocent in a way. Yeah, rollerblading has taken on something like <laughs> really big for me. Yeah, that'd be that'd be one of them for sure. So it sounds like this is something that you really appreciated as a kid and then you kind of had that separation of you stopped doing it for a while and then you decided that you would come back to it. Is that also part of the connection as well as like you're returning to that, that sense of like you're returning to simpler things? A little bit. Yeah. um, When you're a kid, it's a lot easier to live in whatever world is happening like inside your brain. And it's a lot easier to get lost in that. And as we get older, at least I found for myself, it gets harder and harder to like tune out the noise. And so I hold on really tightly to anything that helps me tune out the noise. 
And I think like, you know, skating is, is, is one of those things. It's something that like it's, it's centering when you're rollerblading or when you're skating or whatever you're doing, like you're the main character again for a second. <laughs> and, and, and so that, that's what it is for me. You seem to have another thing that you, you also thought was a favorite non-musical thing. Yeah, I wanted to talk about um, writing. Yeah, I study communication. I don't know. For, for me, like, and I guess this fits into music as well, you know, songwriting. Something like a disconnect that I'm always trying to bridge is like, I feel like I can talk to people and it's like such beautiful, vibrant things happening in conversation. But I feel like my eternal struggle is to try and like capture those things and like put them on the page, right? So that's something I, I try and do regularly. And, and I think this is, you know, just a good way to like stay tuned into yourself and to stay tuned into like your inner world is to just like stop, take inventory, write about it. So that's something that I do. Just the, the, the puzzle piecing of like words together in, in any way. I write for the Daily Illini at school and I also right now I'm working at the Habitat for Humanity Restore in University and I write itemless things all day. Like I stare into, you know, these antiques and just try and like like what's my entry point for this like random object that I have no understanding of. So like stuff like that, like trying to figure out how to distill these things into writing, like that's something that really captivates me and something that I can see myself going after for a long time. Like writing to you is like this way to connect with the rest of the world or like make sense of the things around you. Absolutely. So do you have a particular like style of writing that you like or is it just anything and everything or... When I write for my own enjoyment, it's like personal narrative. I'm reading a book right now called The Idiot, and I really love the narrative style of it. It's very frank. It's so candid, but, you know, she'll she'll say stuff and not, like, dig really deep into how she's feeling or the motives behind it. It's just kind of like the way that the things are occurring in her brain. Like, she will just kind of present it like that on the page, just like, and it's really stark. And, And that can, like, I think evoke something in you even better sometimes than if you try and get very descriptive. You know, sometimes you can't capture all the nuance. And there's a way, I think, to capture the nuance without saying it. So that's what I try and do. I try and write, like, you know, personal narratives in a way that's just not over-explaining itself, I guess, is what I'm going for. (laughs) Do you approach your writing as, like, a journal or... A little bit more, I don't know, what, how do you want to say, like, is it more like taking an inventory? Yeah, how would you describe your overall, like, writing? There definitely is a difference there. Like, I, I keep a journal, and a journal is, like, really just, like, real-time processing. Um, sometimes it's not even, like, coherent, because it doesn't have to be, because it's a journal. Okay, honestly, this kind of started as a joke a few years ago. My sister, my older sister, Olivia, told me she was writing a memoir. And I was like, that's hilarious. Why would you write a memoir? She was like, try it. She was like, it's really helpful to kind of step back and narrativize whatever year of your life and like look at it. And it's a really interesting thing that happens when you stop and you really try and catalog these things, like, you know, it also changes the way that the memory exists in your own brain. And so essentially what I'm doing is like, I have a folder of just like memoir clips. And it takes time to, you can't just like write chapters of your memoir as they're happening because it doesn't work like that. Like you need time to write it and consolidate it in your head before you can even begin to put it into like words. I'm 21 now and I found that I can write about my life up to like 18 and everything after that, I think I need a few more years on. So, so that's what that'll look like for me. I'll sit down and like try and, you know, think about a particular relationship from when I was 18 or think about like a setting I was in and try and look at it from that point of view where I'm like, oh, if if this is all a story, which like it is, you know, if, if, if I'm like, if everything I was living is a story, like how would I put it down and who are the characters and all that. In my mind, as you were telling me about that, it kind of popped into my head, like, do you feel that as you're doing this process that it sounds like you kind of are compartmentalizing like different sections of your life, you're like milestoning Mm -hmm. a little bit. You have to know where the narrative's going before and where it's gotten in order to be able to put it all together? Or is that, am I am I totally like off in my assessment? Yeah, I feel like sometimes, and this goes for songwriting too. I, I'm sure some people can write songs about things that they're like in the middle of. Um, 
But for me, in songwriting and in normal writing, I feel like I have to hit a checkpoint. And you don't know until you've hit it, and sometimes not even until after you've hit it. But I feel like I have to reach some stage where I'm like, there's like a clarity that you reach and you're like, okay, I can, I can start to write about this. So I I definitely, I agree with you. Like you have to kind of see, you can't see the trajectory of like your situation while you're in it. I think you have to reach like a certain distance first. Karina, thank you so much for being on the show and telling me about your song, new blue rollerblades and about the CU scene and some of your favorite artists and your favorite venues and then also your favorite mm-hmm. non-musical things and which happen to be rollerblades and uh, writing. And I I just really appreciate you taking the time to chat with me a little bit about the Champaign-Urbana music scene. And thank you so much. Thank you. This is so much fun. <laughs> Thank you for listening to Champagne is also a band podcast. This is Karina reminding you, great music is out there. Go find it where you live. You almost have an NPR voice. It's so good. <laughs> <laughs> studio. South Beaker on the inside. <laughs>